the days of muscle cars and micro buses. So I was aiming, I just scratched some lines, but I was aiming for about an inch. Let's see what I got. Let's see. One inch, 25 thousandths. Hmm, not bad. Yeah, I need to get to 880. I'm at 997. I'm about 100 thousandths away. A little more. Oh, but I'm going to take a break. I've been grinding on this thing for a while. Stand by.
another boring job. Okay, so here's the, the little hub, right? It's got a recess here that fits into the, the lead before the threads of this little chuck. Oh, I got an old, uh, the four jaw that came with this thing that's a piece of junk. It fits that too, and it'll be perfectly good for welding. So I got that guy. On the other side, there's a boss. See, I got these three, these two little bearings. Let me zoom this in. So here's a bearing. Yep. Here's another bearing. Right. So what I can do, and then I made this guy. It's got a snap ring groove inside. I don't have the snap ring yet, but um, I'll have to get one uh, internal snap ring that size. I haven't even measured it yet. I just fit it for the bearings. These bearings Let's see there we go <coughs> well They just fit, I got a couple thousands. So this guy like that. <clears throat> My little pliers barely fit this snap ring. snap in so now I have the chuck that I can turn it's not very hard to turn at all I like it Okay, so you've seen this guy. And what the, the issue is, this part is what hooks on to the chucks. And if I don't make a positive ground, like a really good ground to this rotating part, it will find its ground by going through the bearings and the motor and stuff. So I have to make a ground, a rotating ground, like a slide ground. And so I've got a piece of brass, copper, it's mostly copper, it's soft brass. And I have it super glued to this little guy, which fits in a collet on the lathe. And so what I'm going to do is trepan this into a 
big washer that fit right on this lip down against this flange and then I'll make a brush out here that rides on it so that it passes the ground from the case to the hub without going through the bearings. At least that's the plan anyway. So I gotta do this. Okay, so I'll bring this down as close as I can get it. So, but you can't see this guy or this guy, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of hard to block things. All right, stay still, high temp. Flux for silver brazing. It's the black stuff. It's like a liquid. It's uh, got water in it. I don't open it unless I'm getting it out, but it's kind of like you got to keep it mixed up. You got to stir it up real good every time you open the can. This is 56. Safety Sil 56. High silver content, silver solder. So. I'm gonna go down here. Try not to lose this thing. I think the other video sucked. So I started over on one part. I gotta cut four of those little bits. And I wanna make sure that they don't fly off where I lose them. So I get them in the cutter, put a rag right there. And then it tends to fall in the box. One more. There it is. Let's see if I can get these guys in my hand. See, I just lost one. Let's try that again. There they are. That's how small they are. This stuff is extremely strong and it doesn't take much to fill this little gap right in here when it's pressed together it'll make a really good electrical mechanical um, connection that's what I'm all, what it's all about So this part, I was kind of talking the Sirius XM radio was playing in the background. I had it down on like volume one and this whole section 
YouTube flagged it as being copyright protected, and I went back and deleted the video, went in and edited it and turned the volume all the way down so you couldn't hear any of it, and I re-uploaded it, and they flagged it again, and it turns out even with the volume down, their algorithm can see the waveform, <laughs> and uh, so... I've been spending like two days trying to figure this out. And I finally detached all the audio and deleted it. I'm going to try again. And if you see this video with me talking, it means that I managed to get it to play because a couple of bands like the Eagles and Aerosmith are all upset that I like their music and had it playing in the background and they didn't get their three cents for the couple of minutes that it was playing. So... Anyhow, I ran this thing for hours, moving it up and down, getting it all, you know, making sure the motor could run extended periods at low voltage and high voltage, and uh, put this thing all together. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. So, at this part... I'm actually testing the continuity of the ground circuit. I mentioned earlier that if you let the welder's ground circuit go through a motor or a bearing, and <laughs> you're welding at 50 or 60 amps or 100 amps, whatever it is, it'll basically wipe out the bearings. Kind of reminds me of like 40 years ago, I was working at a dealership at for Dotson's and we had a car that kept burning out wheel bearings and turned out after five mechanics looked at it and I got it I figured out that the ground for the battery was off of the engine block <laughs> yeah and so it would burn out the wheel bearings every few months anyway I managed to figure out that this thing is running a reliable one or two ohms resistance and so that's like Close enough to zero resistance for me to weld without worrying about everything. So, nice. You'll see here, I'm about to check it to try and get down to zero. And, of course, you know, it's handheld contacts moving things, so it's constantly changing its resistance. See, there it's two. And I'm like, come on. Oh, one. Give me zero. Give me zero. So I tried it right on the copper. Yeah, there it is. Cool. So I have a reliable one or two ohm resistance. That's what I'm looking for.